Dear Sir or Madam, Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am Alexandre de Ruveau, and I'm the staff director of the Radiological Protection Working Group of the World Nuclear Association. I will be presenting today on the views from radiation protection practitioners in the nuclear industry with regards to the change in dose quantities. To do so, I will break down my presentation in four different parts. The first part will give you an overview of the World Nuclear Association and its Radiological Protection Working Group. I will then speak about the ICRP publication 147 and the proposed changes. I will then broach the ICRU report committee 26 and the proposed changes, and then I will conclude. The WNA forms a network of nearly 200 members implemented in countries where nuclear technologies and techniques are being used. The role of the WNA is to promote a wider understanding of nuclear energy among key nuclear influencers and producing authoritative information, developing key common position and contributing to the energy debate. To fight global warming and to meet the growing demand for sustainable energy, nuclear energy will need to provide 25% of the electricity mix before 2050 as part of a clean and reliable low energy mix. The Harmony program is a global initiative of the nuclear industry to provide a framework for action, working with key stakeholders so that barriers to growth can be removed. The WNA provides a vehicle for members to shape economic, safety and environment issues through its working group. The RP Working Group is a collection of RP professionals from a range of organizations involved in the nuclear fuel cycle. Range of activities include mining, fuel fabrication, electricity generation, education, research, new build, decommissioning, and waste management. It advocates scientifically based policies and practices supported by industry experience to provide sufficient protection to the workers, public, and the environment. It channels the global industry voice on RP question and interfaces with institutions such as the ICRP, the IEA, and SCARE or IRPA. We will now see the proposed changes from the ICRP publication 147. There are two main changes from this publication. The first one is the discontinuation of equivalent dose for deterministic effect. And the other one is that effective dose should be used below 100 millisievert but could still be used for emergency situations up to one sievert. The aims of the ICRP are to avoid using the sievert for deterministic situations and to avoid communications issue with members of the public when talking about doses to the organ versus doses to the whole body. And that refers specifically to the thyroid dose versus the effective dose. Now, let's see the protection quantities and operational quantities are, as currently existing. From a physical quantity, specifically from an absorbed dose in gray, um, two sets of RP quantities can be derived. The first one is from the ICRP and the protection quantities. We have a set of three different dose quantities, organ absorbed dose, organ equivalent dose, an effective dose. The first one being in gray and the last two are being in sievert. These are calculated quantities using phantoms for organ absorbed dose and factored with weighting factor WR and WT. Uh, these are derived quantities and they are used to set those limits. On the other hand, we have the ICRU and the operational quantities, which are measurable quantities. We have specifically the ambient dose equivalent, directional dose equivalent, and the personal dose equivalent, all of them expressed in sievert. They are calculated using absorbed dose and quality factors, Q, and then validated by measurement. These are practical quantity and they are used for monitoring instrumentation. As seen previously, the ICRP is willing to discontinue the use of equivalent dose. Equivalent dose is defined by the sum of the RWR by DTR, WR being different from the RBE. Although the ICRP publication suggests to discontinue the use of organ equivalent dose 
for deterministic effect, the aim is on the, on the, on the the longer term is to discontinue it altogether for both deterministic and stochastic effects. We would therefore um, have two protection quantities left, the organ absorbed dose, DT in gray, and the effective dose, E in sievert. The calculation of the organ absorbed dose and effective dose will be using correction factors related to the RB, just like the WT and WR uh, factor we are using these days. Uh, they will depend on several variables, uh, so type of particle array considered, so whether we consider low LET or high LET radiation, uh, energy of the particle, organ considered, but also uh, whether we consider stochastic effect or tissue reaction. Um, the ICRP uh, will also introduce a set of standard values to use uh, for RP professionals and to avoid uh, confusing interpretation uh, of the RBs. These changes are meant uh, to be introduced um, by ICRP at the next uh, general recommendation when they are issued, and it is estimated that it will take uh, between 10 to 20 years for these changes to be implemented. Some of the feedback from our members is that they would like a greater clarity as to how the new system will work, um, especially with regards to mixed radiation fields and IET radiation. So typically during routine operations on nuclear power plants, uh, we would have um, radiation workers visiting the, 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 the nuclear vessel about one to two times a month for operation and maintenance patrols and radiation measurements and they would be exposed to both X-ray and neutron flux. Um, so the nuclear operators would like to, to understand uh, how their calculation will be impacted by the changes. Um, so this is especially true for ILT radiation, which uh, have not been uh, updated as part of the publication 118 of the ICRP. As for the consequences, we know that the changes in the concept of equivalent dose and effective dose will have repercussion on the nuclear industry. We would like a greater clarity as to how the new correction factors will be implemented, especially regarding the ILET and stochastic and deterministic effect. We would also like to understand what would be the method to calculate these new dose quantities. We know so far that any software using the equivalent dose will have to be replaced or updated. Internal dosimetry software, uh, radiation emergency preparedness and response software, etc., etc. Also, training programs will have to be updated and people will have to be retrained. I would now like to broach the proposed changes from the ICRU ICRP Report Committee 26. This document is in a final draft form and is collaboration between the ICRU and the ICRP. The report recommends a redefinition of the operational quantities for external radiation. The aim is to align the definition of the protection quantities and operational quantities and to improve accuracy of measurement. We will therefore transition from the current system, which foresees the use of three different operational quantities, ambient dose equivalent, directional dose equivalent, and personal dose equivalent, all of them in sievert, to the new system with four different operational quantities. The ambient dose, the personal dose, the personal absorbed dose, and the directional absorbed dose. The first two one being in sievert and the last two one being in gray. The proposed changes by the ICRU are in line with the proposed changes of the ICRP. The dose equivalent will be discontinued and will therefore switch from a system where all the operational quantities were in sievert to a new system where only the operational quantities representing the effective dose will remain in sievert, whereas the operational quantities for the organs, namely the skin and the lens of the eye, will be expressed in terms of gray. In terms of uh, instrument response, the ICRU has assessed that different energy response and angle dependence for photon and neutron will require in some case modification of the instrument's design and or calibration. This was later confirmed by one of our members that tested the ionization chamber response to 
current uh, calibration field versus the newly proposed calibration field. This was done with a cesium-137, and it shows an increase of 20% of the instrument response, plus um, a very large of a response for low energy gamma, so below 70 keV. Now, monitoring instrumentations are extensively used in the nuclear industry. Um, they are precision equipment and are therefore very expensive. And just to give you an idea, we've put together this little table which summarized the, the amount and cost of handheld monitor used on a small nuclear power plant constituted of two PWRs, and therefore does not account for some of the most expensive pieces of equipment, uh, namely area particulate monitors, whole body contamination monitors, portal monitors, etc. Cetera, et cetera. But still, we have like a good understanding of the, the cost of this monitoring instrumentation for a small nuclear power plant that would amount to around 5 million US dollars. Uh, now remember that we have around 455 nuclear power reactors are in operation worldwide. Uh, so basically any change to the design, calibration or units would have cost implications and that would have to be multiplied by the sheer quantity of instrumentation in use around the world. As for the consequences of the ICRU changes on operational dose quantities, um, our members have assessed that this will result in a significant impact on the nuclear industry. There are particular concerns over additional costs that have been identified for the replacement and update of existing hardware and software. So as we saw before, the new dose quantity will result in changes for instrumentation currently in use, and health monitors, static monitors, EPDs, uh, TLD readers, uh, in, in terms of design and or calibration, and that would result in additional costs for the nuclear industry. Also, those calculation programs, reporting programs, those management programs for personal dosimetry will need to be changed. So all these softwares will need to be updated and that would come at a cost, of course. And finally, the, the nuclear work, workforce will have to be retrained and introduced to the new concepts. Um, and that, that would represent a very large amount of people. To summarize, the implementation of the new dose quantities will have a wider impact than just the nuclear industry. Any public or private body dealing with ionizing radiation might be impacted one way or another. Medical sector, transport, military, etc. Et also, laws, regulation, technical guidelines, technical manuals, procedures will have to be revised. Our members uh, would like a greater clarity as to why these changes are required. RP practitioners uh, have been successfully using the existing system for decades and consider it to be a robust, adequate and well understood system. As always, the nuclear industry is supportive of any changes uh, to support an improvement of health and safety. But drastic changes to a reliable and proven system need to be justified. Um, in this case, the more scientific and accurate approach is welcome. But RP, as practiced in the nuclear industry, consists mostly of field measurements as opposed to precision measurements. And they already encompass an acceptable degree of uncertainty between 10 and 20 percent. So the members thought that the benefits brought by the revision of the dose quantities seems rather unjustified with regards to the cost involved. Thank you for your attention and thank you to our members who took part in the elaboration of this presentation. If you have any question, please do not hesitate to come back to me via email, telephone or in this Q&A session. Thank you. Goodbye.